hey, kick back, grab a sketchbook, a little cup of coffee or something. We're gonna work more on photo bashing now. This time I'm gonna go in real time a little bit probably. I've got my coffee as well. So now it's time to, you know, analyze. And when you have an image to this point, um, where it's like established, but there's problems with it, you know, that's when you need to really reevaluate what's going on. The first way to reevaluate is to like zoom out really far and see if the thumbnail is working. You know, the obvious thing to me uh, that doesn't work is that this area right here, um, let me add a layer and draw on, on top of everything, just to make some notes. Um, is that this area right here is too dark. And that's a problem. I think the green is like wrong, just in the color range, it's like too yellow green. Um, and it's just, it doesn't fit. You know, there's not enough green elsewhere in the image to make it work together with other things. So it's, it's breaking a sense of unity. I also think the sky could be punchier. And so I brought in a couple of of partial layers to like test colors. So I have this from a photograph, which I like a lot. And I have this, um, which maybe I like less because it's doesn't have the those like purples in it. Maybe it does. Let me, um, it's a big, it was a big image. So if I transform and go to distort, see, it's got mostly blue. Um, so I could put it in there and have a little bit of that blue showing. Um, but I like the color range here better. I like the, I mean, I like that just as a photo, but I like this more. Um, so maybe if we like transform this, distorted it, um, let's zoom out some. If we pull this wider. And just really went nuts with how wide this is. That can make for, make up for deficiencies in the actual reference. And give us a good color range. Then I think what we can do is marquee that layer um, see where we're at now okay then if we did like multiply and kind of see where we're at there so now what we want to do is just move this back in the layer stack to where it would normally go um, be above our original thing. We have to turn off some painting and turn off um, these little bits that we've did done to fill in. There we go. And then we can probably move it some more to get it positioned well. If we turn that paint back on, that's actually kind of okay. Um, we might have to erase some of this layer. So what we do if we need to erase a layer is we can duplicate this layer um, as like a backup and, uh, and um, turn it off, go back to this layer, hit the eraser tool, 
and cut back into it a little bit. I think it's mostly these um, light colors that weren't working. I think just cutting that out is going to help, you know. So that's going to change the color range of everything. And it's going to change, like, what we need to do as far as um, getting color into some of the other areas. Which is fine. So, um... That means I think I would want to add another layer. Um, I also do this other thing too, where um, I'll take uh, either type or write in a separate layer, like the tools that I use. So I have sampled brush 210, so that I can find it again. So it just makes it easier if you like work on a lot of stuff at the same time like me. Um, when you come back to it, it's just, um, makes things simpler. I'm on the eraser tool. Dang it. All right. So if I come up here and I start throwing in into these light areas, some of these colors from the sky. This is going to be more of um, more of what we're after here. So this is going to be pretty, um, it's going to be intense as far as the change in the color. So it's less muted, more vibrant, and I think that that's probably a good thing anyway, because I personally have a tendency when I do this stuff to choose more muted colors and so I'm trying to work away from that and develop a bigger variety of colors. So, and you can use some of the duller tones in there as kind of like the halftone areas. And then when you get into the shadows, you're going to pick up colors out of here and potentially use darker ones than are actually in the sky. But this is cool because it's also going to give us more of a complementary color feel. In certain areas, especially. And the nice thing is we haven't covered up all the rock texture, so the rock texture is still coming through. And we can actually bring that back in as well. Not, We don't have to be done with the rock texture. You can bring cool colors into these shadows too. You can bring cool colors onto this green and work back and forth on the green until we get something more um, satisfactory. You know, like take this green, it's really far over to the yellow. We can swing it really far back over to the blue, and that'll probably get this green to work better, honestly. And we'll get like these bright orange flecks on the green, I think. Like little areas. But I think it needs to be based on a cooler green. 
overall. Um, so that quickly changed like the whole punch of the image. Um, what we do need to do still is go in and get the contrast range of this this uh, this layer out. Um, this layer and yeah it's this layer right here that we've got problems with um, and let's do some adjustments first let's just do a brightness contrast thing reduce brightness some and then let's turn that off and see where this is all coming from So there's some coming from here. It's mostly just coming from here. And I'll just move it just all the way up. And then there's something behind there that's messing everything. Yeah. It's in this layer. Actually, it's back behind all of that, too. Okay. It's the remainder of this layer, because this layer doesn't quite cover everything. So, what we need to do is go into this layer, um, lasso bits of it, copy and paste that in, move that down, Paste again. Sometimes you will lose stuff in the layer stack and you just have to bring it back by um, selecting the move tool and then if you hold shift and an arrow key, it'll move it around pretty quickly. Arrow key, it can just nudge stuff like just slightly, which is still useful when you need it, but sometimes you have to move stuff fast. So we're just got a loose um, color selected from that and we're just like pushing it in there. And then what we do is select all those layers, merge them together, and if we like it, we can then merge it down one more into this one full layer so that it all covers up. Um, I think we need to adjust the brightness contrast again and bring it bright again and reduce contrast. Um, just to keep pushing it into that realm. Now we're back where we kind of where we need to be and the contrast range is better except in that layer there's all those ugly um, like pink things so I think we need to, to hide this layer again and uh, get that turned off um, and so what I'm gonna do here is just go in with the magic wand tool since these are really obvious colors and uh, start deleting these little segments. Whoops. Sometimes you move too quickly. I'm going to undo that because I think we need that shape there. Whoops. So this is kind of like semi-automatic and semi-manual. Um, this is going to save us a lot of painting work, though. If I were, if I had been more careful in the original selection, maybe it would have been easier. Okay. 
then we're done there. So now we go back and we turn on these uh, these two layers. See how I haven't really painted over that area very much? Zooming in to double, like it's not, um, it's not, we haven't touched it a lot. So I think there's a lot to do there. Now we see like the kind of photo bash stuff and the painted areas kind of separate from each other. So um, I think what we can do is go back into the, uh, the mountain area and reevaluate how much contrast we need to get that to stand out. Um, what I like to think of is there's a um, there's a minimum contrast that you need to get something to stand out. So if we go over to our color tab and we do a little analysis, like let's so we pick a fairly bright color there and we pick this color. See how big of a difference there is? Um, that thing's jumping like all over the place. So what we can do is we can swing this. I like to do like halfway, maybe halfway up the value range towards that and just see what this would look like if it were closer to that. So you would still see it just fine. Um, and so we can we can adjust this area like that. Because again, we're going for um, we're going for the painted look. So we can use a variety of soft edges here. And we can use dark areas too. And we probably want to have a little bit of orange in there. Okay, so now this is getting a little bit better. I still think it's too high contrast in this area here. Um, so I wanted to bring, um, and I wanted to bring more of the, the bluish ra color range in here. Um, so we can go more towards these blues here. Even swing towards the blue green. These are these are supposed to be like trees and things. Cause it's just still too dark, you know? We can have some dark on the lake, I think, but it's just too much on this area to have all of that whole band dark. See, that's sitting back in its proper place more now. And it also, now that I've got some green in there, it's developing a nice color dialogue. Um, I think we also need to run in and add more of um, more of this color in here. And potentially go back into this layer and erase more of that.
and just having that subtly soft edge it's just going to push everything back into the right spot we could probably zoom in pretty far maybe not to 200 percent zoom but 100 percent and work that out a little bit better Because the problem is, if it gets too cut out looking, you know, then it then it kind of breaks what you're trying to do, which is to make stuff kind of cohesive and continuous. And then I think the other thing is we need like a clear distinction between these two areas. And then this may need to just be more bluish. So we can grab some of that in there. Start to make that into the color range. I'm doing this really loose and painterly because there's like a scale of photo bashing or like a sliding scale of how people use it. And, you know, people don't always, uh, it doesn't have to be like super realistic, though a lot of people use it that way. Um, I think it's a good way to use it. But you have options, is what I'm trying to say. And there, because there's a range of images that you can make, just in general and in and with visual. Um, with the sort of visual realm that we're after in digital art. Because again, it's a tool, it's not an end in itself. So there, that has a pretty good, um, the color range is definitely more developed. The contrast range is better. Um, we can pull some of these uh, highlight colors into these, um, into these trees and stuff. just to pick up a little bit of it. Even on the side of this mountain, maybe over here too. Um, over here, it probably got too bright, so we can knock it down with the green. Same there. And then we definitely need some of this color, like, reflected in the water here. And we need some of these new colors reflected too. You know, some of these blues and some of these greens go in there now. Okay, so that's getting that contrast range back under control. And now that we're getting these back in, it's making this grass shape stand out better. And then we're going to need more of this probably down here. can always bring sky colors in. Okay.
All right, that's getting better. Um, so yeah, the background I think was was highly problematic, and now that we fixed that, I think it's like way it's just way better of an image. Um, this little area is bugging me. So let's see what layer that's from. I think it's from this layer. So erase into here a little bit. Yeah. There's still like some funky things uh, in that layer. Like hard edges that I had left from earlier just when I was doing the bulk erase. Even in here. Whoops, probably don't need to do that. Probably just need to paint over. Um, yeah. Okay. Now we might need to photo bash in some like grass and stuff like that. Um, maybe some plants. Let me see if um, start going through some references and figuring these out. You know. Um, I think I need just like a general grass texture. That'll help out. Especially if I could find one at the right time of day, that would help. Um, potentially this could work. Because um, I have that like kind of registered at the front, maybe that could help in there. Um, let's see, let's grab some other images that could potentially be decent. Maybe like even marsh grasses might work. Because the angle here is a little bit better. So we've got some marsh grasses that might actually work really well. So let me try that. Um, I'm going to lasso some stuff. If it will let me select the lasso tool lasso tool and I'm still on a brush for some reason because I'm on the eraser there we go get off the eraser tool all right okay so I'm gonna add a layer uh, paste that in yes I'm not really worried about that and then I'm gonna transform this uh, I think I'm gonna flip it um, over the uh, axis there and yeah, I mean, I like that edge there. Let me turn turn to like a soft light blend mode here. I could probably move it about there. And then what's cool is I can start erasing with the brush that I've been using this whole time and erase the uh, parts that I don't need out of here. And this will give me a better edge and just kind of place the texture in there. So this is kind of another um, interesting photo bashing technique is I can just use 
elements of texture in here. And I can also reduce the opacity. If I reduce it all the way down, I don't see it. But at a certain point, the opacity comes in. If I go about there, it just kind of picks up some of the texture and not without like changing the value of everything. If I work on this edge here, I don't even have to like paste in another one, right? So then I can just lasso out everything over here and delete that sec segment, right? Um, then if I go back to the eraser tool and just work right here, probably, I'll have a pretty good, uh, pretty good element bashed in there. Um, it's subtle, right? But it does make a difference probably erase more here too um, let's see what else I think if we grabbed um, some plants there too that might help um, I have this bush here that could go right there as like or this tree we could turn the tree into like a little mini mini bush area just grab some of that We'll do that soft light blend mode, transform it, scale it way down. Then I'm going to erase again. So this is going to give us a texture that we didn't have before. So I've got that texture in there now. Now what's cool is um, I could paste that in again, um, transform it again. This time what I'll do is I'll just like um, uh, flip it. Well, I won't flip it vertical, I'll flip horizontal. So what I'm interested in is the texture. I'll go back to that same soft light blend mode, transform it again, uh, down again. Uh, hit there, then start erasing. And I'm erasing with the brush that I painted with. So I'm getting a similar edge quality, which I think is kind of critical if you're going to do this sort of technique. And then I'm more or less erasing completely in areas where I don't need that. Whoops, that was too much erasure right there. I want to be careful. You know, I don't want to like do this too sloppily. Otherwise, it doesn't really work out. Um, then paste in again. Same blend mode. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to merge these, and then um, and then change the opacity some. So I'm also going to use a bigger one down here so that the texture is is bigger. Um, yeah. So you just got to go in and just erase. If you start layering this too much, it like too many things over each other, you can kind of like lose um, what you're doing in the first place, which we don't want to do, right? Because we're trying to add textures into a place that we have like a little bit of texture and color range already established. We're not trying to like break what we've done, you know. So let's go to normal blend mode. Soft light again. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're going to take all of these. We're going to select and merge those. 
Then we're going to change the blend mode back to soft light and then reduce the opacity until and bring it back until it works. So about 70, 75%. There. So that's kind of like the textural blend thing that I think is, is important to do. We need to, um, we can restack layers, but I think it's going to work better this way. Um, then I may need to go ahead and grab these colors, uh, get back into the brush. And I, I need this color to like overlap the rocks here, very obviously. Um, yeah, this is getting better, I think. I can also work up here. And I think I, I also eventually just need to like simplify the sky some. Um, over here, I think it's just too complex. just to get some like brush stroke stuff to make it more painterly. More visual impact here. But I don't wanna like, I don't wanna lose what I've done in terms of the, uh, the photo bashing part. I still don't like the green. Um, so, the other thing that I can do to like do um, color unity is I can pick um, what's called a unifying color and like, you know, this I think would be like violet would be a good unifying color. So what I can do is go over just for the extreme example um, and I can bucket fill that violet over the whole thing. If I don't like that color, I can change it, right? So now, a simple way to do this is to reduce the opacity really far, and this can give the whole thing a cast, as much of a unifying color cast as I need, right? I still perceive like the colors as they are, like yellows and oranges and things. Um, but even with a 5% uh, opacity overlay, that brings everything into the same uh, color range. And I love doing this because it's like, you can work on crazy colors and extremes, throw this over there, and then uh, change it. Other ways to do it are to uh, go with blend modes. And what you do is you just go through all the blend modes and uh, see which one works best. And actually, you might even, if you're an illustrator, some of these like, or some of these might actually work really well um, to get you out of normal ranges. Like when we get into expression and glitch art, this might actually be really wonderful, you know? Um, so we could do the... Um, so we could do like the, uh, we try the screen blend mode, lower the opacity and see what that does. See, that's interesting too, cause it's like lowering a little bit of contrast. So, um, yeah, picking a blend mode and then reducing opacity. Like you could do that soft light again, or even overlay. And flipping between them kind of gives you a good 
picture. So now like the color range is getting closer together. Like if I turn that off, you can see how the greens are less extreme that way. I can also go through back with my eraser and and uh, like erase bits of it for areas that I don't want to be affected. But mostly it's that green that I don't like. Um, so what I may need to do is just uh, go back into this uh, this green area and uh, and paint in again until I like this color. Um, it made like see I've got like it's pretty saturated so I'm gonna lower saturation and I'm gonna go in here with kind of a bold move on a new layer and see what we can do here. See, I still don't like that either, right? I think it just needs to be cooler and maybe even darker. Maybe if we bring in some of this color over here. Um, yeah, I just can't get this green to, to work in a way that I want. Um, Plenty of greens, just never the right ones, you know? Um, I guess I could... Do a partial opacity fill. No, I don't like it. Um, maybe it's just that it needs more uh, more design. So maybe what I need to do is just um, go in here and say, well, okay, like overlapping planes. So if I go off of here, I could create like a little bit of an overlapping plane that goes up here. And I could go in with a cooler green. I could create um, like an overlapping area here. And if I run it all the way down here, that might be better. So this like catches light, I guess. And then I could do the same thing again here so that I create another like stack. And then be sure that I'm getting stuff there. And then if I'm getting that there, I need some light areas to kind of go over here too. I think that's better. Um, I think maybe since it's dark, I might need to just go ahead and add in some of these blues. Maybe the grass is just blue here.
should probably pick some of these purples even to sneak in there. I think that's probably... That might have been what's bugging me is that it's just like it's too too obviously green. Maybe it needed to push more towards the shadow color. Okay, that's kind of coming together a little more. Um, we can probably get more like ambient color here. Okay. See, that's a little better, I think. Um, it's more unified. The green doesn't bother, bother me as much. We could go in and we could work on this like and nitpick forever, but I think um, in terms of a demo, I want to stop here because it kind of shows you like, you know, like a path forward with photo bashing. And you can see here too, there's there's still like a fair amount of the original photo texture left in there. Um, there's still glitches. You know, we were, to get this like super clean, we'd want to get rid of all those hard edges um, and these cut and paste elements. But, um, you know, for the textural approach that we're going for, like it's kind of working because it's somewhere in between, right? Um, so we'll, we'll cut it here and uh, and that should give you enough to go on, or, or a little more to go on in terms of photo bashing. And, um, you know, I want you to, to continue to, to try and use the technique and see how, um, see how you can get it to work for you. You know, this isn't um, a, uh, like a set in stone method. It's got a lot of flexibility. It's got a lot of range. Um, and it's up to you as to how you would like to kind of continue to apply it.